Hello, what's up guys? Codeforge here. Welcome to the next video. Today we'll learn how to make one-to-many bidirectional relationship using Java Spring Boot, JPA and Hibernate. We'll start with generating project. Everything is almost set up. We have to add few dependencies over here. So we'll need Spring Web. Also, we'll need H2 database and of course we'll need JPA. Project is ready so we can generate it and open it in the IDE. So here we are in the IDE and now we will start with adding configuration of the JPA and H2. So we open our project, we go to the source main resources and here we want to open application properties. So I will paste few lines over here. And if you don't know what's going on here, you can watch my video about setting up the H2 database. Now we can move on and create our entities for our one-to-many relationship. So we go to the Java, our main package, and over here we want to right-click it, select new and package. We will call it model. We'll have two entities, so we have to create two classes. So let's create them. We click new Java class and the first one will be item. And the second entity, second class will be cart. Now we want to mark our cart class with the entity annotation. So it will be possible to persist it to the database later. And also we want to specify the table name, so we'll use the table annotation, we have to import it of course. And we will set the name attribute to the card. Our card will have primary key and to create one we have to use the ID annotation. And also together with this one we'll use the generated value annotation with the strategy set to generation type auto. And now we want to put it on the private long ID property. So we don't have to care about the sequence or the value of the primary key because it will be auto generated. Each of our cards will have a name, so we will add another property here. So it will be private string and it will be called name. Of course, you can add more properties over here, like number of wheels or type of the card, but we'll make it simple. Inside our card, we want to store multiple items and to do it, we have to create a list. So we say private list and this list will store the item objects. And we have to import it, of course. And we'll name our list items. We'll also assign memory, so we'll say new RI list. Our card entity is not done yet, but for now we'll leave it like this and we'll move to the item entity. Here we want to mark it with the entity annotation in the first place and also to specify the table name. We say table and we'll set it to item. Each item will also have primary key and to do it we want to use ID annotation together with the generated value annotation with the strategy set to generation type auto. And we of course want to assign the property to this annotation so we will say private long ID. Each item will also have the serial number so we'll say private string and we'll call this property serial number. Since we are creating bidirectional relationship, we also want to add another property here. So it will be private and it will be a reference to the card entity. Now we want to create our one to many relationship. So let's go back to the card because we will start with this side. Here we want to mark our items list with one to many annotations. So we say one to many. And between the parentheses, we'll add a few more attributes. So first of all, we will say mapped by and we'll set it to the cart. After this, we also want to set the cascade and we'll say cascade type all. And the last one will be orphan removal and we'll set it to true. 
Okay, first attribute here, the mapped by, set to card, uh, allow us to point the field that owns the relationship, and we say the card because in the item entity we have the card reference. Second attribute over here, cascade set to all. So each operation performed on the card will be propagated to the items which are stored over here. So if we save the card entity, and we have some items assigned to this card, all the items will also be persisted to the database. And the last attribute, orphan removal, set to true. If we have the card, and in this card we have, let's say, two items, if we remove this card together with it, the items will be also removed from the database. Okay, so to finish this entity, we have to also add constructor, which we'll use later, so we'll generate it and we'll make a constructor with name only and for the list we'll create the setter so we'll go over here we will generate the setter and we'll generate it for the items list card entity is ready so we can go back to the item entity and finish up our one-to-many relationship since it's bidirectional relationship, we want to go over here and mark this card reference with the many to one annotation. So you can see that here in the card we used the one to many, and here we are using many to one. We can also specify the column name, uh, which will store the primary key of the card. So it will be a fragging key for the item entity. And to do it, we want to use join column annotation and over here we want to specify name and we'll set it to card id it looks good we can also generate a constructor for this entity which we'll use later in our test so we will do it for the serial number and for the card we don't have to care about the id since it is the auto generated value our entities are ready so now we can start up the application and check if the database structure is correct. So we go over here to the Maven plugin Spring Boot Spring Boot Run. After a few seconds, our application should be ready and we'll open the H2 web console. My web browser is over here, so we can log in. And over here, we can see that we have two tables card and the item table. If we check the card structure, we can see that we have ID and name, it's correct. And if we open the item table, we can see that we have the ID, we have the serial number, but we also have the card ID column, which we have specified using join column annotation, and it will store the primary key of the card. So far, so good. We can close it up and create repositories for our entities. So let's close this one and this one. We will have two repositories, but first let's create a package for them. So we right click the main package, new package, and we'll call it repository. Inside we want to create two interfaces. So we say new Java class and we'll change it to the interface. And the first one will be item repository. And also second one for the card. So we right click it, new Java class interface, and it will be card repository. We will start with this one. So we want to mark it with the repository annotation. And also we want to extend. So we say extend field repository. And it's generic type and it is for the card. So the first will be card entity and it has the long type primary key. So we have to say long. Same goes for the item repository. So over here we will mark it with the repository. We also want to extend and it will be crude repository. And this time it is for the item entity and also it has the primary key type of long everything regarding our entities and our repositories is ready now we can go to the main class of our application and over here we'll perform some tests first of all we want to access the context to retrieve our 
uh, repository beans but this time we will need only the one for the cart so we want to create a variable which will store the reference to the context so it will be configurable application context and now using this context we can retrieve the bin and we want to retrieve the card repository bin with the same name and using this configurable application context we can call getBin method for the card repository class now let's create our objects which we want to persist to the database so we'll start with the card so we'll create a card with the constructor which we have created and this constructor will accept the name so let's call it card 999 we will also have two items in our card so let's create them first of all we will have to use the item and let's say we want to buy chocolate and we'll say new item and it will have some serial number so let's say it will be s123 and we want to assign it to our cart let's create another one so let's say we also need shampoo so we'll say item shampoo and we want to also use the constructor so it will be new item with the serial number s321 and we will also assign it to the cart now let's create our list of items which we will later pass to the card so we want to say a list we want to import it and it will store the item objects so it will be items and now we want to use the static method from the arrays and it will be us list and we will pass our chocolate and also shampoo now we can pass these items list to our cards so we can say card set items using the setter which we have created and pass the items list and at the end we can use the card repository and call the save method and to this save method we want to pass our card entity so our card together with the items will be saved to the database let's test it out so we go to the maven spring boot run and after a few seconds our application should be up and we'll open the web console here is my web browser so we can log in and if we open the card table we can see that we have card with the name c999 and if we go to the item table we can see that we have two items with different serial numbers which we have created and they are both assigned to the same card everything works so we can close it up and we can try to remove our card from the database to do it we will have to add empty constructors to our entity so let's go to the item entity and over here we will generate the empty constructor here it is and also we'll need one for the cart so we go over here and we want to generate constructor and we want to make it empty we can go back to our main class and over here after saving our card we also want to delete it so we want to say card repository delete and we pass our card if we start our application after deleting the card together with it the items assigned to this card should be also deleted so let's open the web browser here it is so we can log in and the card table should be empty and we have nothing inside and if we go to the item table it should be also empty because together with the card all the associated items should be deleted okay so this is all for this video i encourage you to play a little bit with this code to get a better understanding how it works and yeah this is all thank you for watching remember about liking and subscribing see you next time